Imagine going to a grocery store, but none of the items or aisles are labeled, or maybe the labels don't make any sense. Like the bread aisle would say carb sponges, or the frozen veggie aisle would be frosty flora. It would probably get pretty frustrating having to walk around hunting for the items you want. You might even just choose to leave. Your main navigation is one of the key ways website visitors find what they're looking for. That's why what you choose for the layout, pages, and titles for your main navigation has such a big impact on the effectiveness of your website. Ahead, you'll learn best practices for setting up your website's main navigation, including common mistakes to avoid, the best layout for your navigation, which pages you should include, and how to title your navigation links. First, let's talk about some of the common mistakes folks make with their website navigation. Too many links. It may be tempting to give folks a lot to choose from in your main navigation, but if you have too many links, your navigation can appear cluttered and it can be difficult for visitors to find what they're looking for. Really long navigation titles. Another way you can clutter up your main navigation is having unnecessarily long titles for your navigation items. About Ben isn't as descriptive as everything you ever wanted to know about who Ben is and what he's all about, but it takes up way less space. Navigation links on multiple lines. This is usually a symptom of the previous two mistakes. If your titles are too long, you have too many items, or your font size is too big, your navigation may break up into multiple lines, which can be confusing for visitors. Best to keep it all on a single line. Difficult to read colors or fonts. I know we all love papyrus, but it's terrible for readability. Choose fonts that are easy to read and colors that contrast well with the background so it's easy for your visitor to see what their navigation options are. Poorly labeled navigation. This is something I alluded to in the beginning of the video. It's not as fun to go with conventional naming, but if you get too creative with your navigation, your visitors may not make the connection between the info they're looking for and the fun, fancy name you've chosen. We'll get into more detail on naming your navigation links later. Poorly placed navigation. If your navigation is placed or laid out in an unusual way, your visitors may have to spend precious time hunting around for links. That is, if they decide to stay on your website at all. Speaking of which, let's talk about your main navigation layout. There are a handful of different ways to structure your main navigation. There's slide-in navigation, footer navigation, static sidebar, tile navigation, header navigation, hamburger menu, but which one is best? When visiting a website, most people follow this pattern when scanning for relevant info, starting at the top and scanning right, and then scanning down the page and to the right again. Part of providing a good user experience is making it easy for people to find the information they're looking for. It may be fun to be creative with your main navigation layout, but most people expect to see it in the header. In addition to placing your main navigation in the header, other things you can do to provide a good user experience are choosing fonts that are legible, making sure there's enough contrast between the font color and the background, and choosing a size that's easy to read. Leave enough space so the header doesn't feel cluttered. At Podio, we offer users a free website with the main navigation in the header. With a Podio site, your navigation menu is customizable with different fonts, colors, and layouts to choose from. All right, now that we've figured out the layout, let's talk about which pages you should include in your main navigation. Your website probably has more pages than what would even fit into your header, but how many should you include and how do you choose which pages make the cut? Let's answer the first question. Most experts agree that you should have no more than seven pages linked in your main navigation. People like having options, but too many options is overwhelming and makes it more difficult for visitors to find what they're looking for. Try to answer this question. When people visit my site, what are they most likely trying to do? Maybe it's buying a product, reading your blog, or getting in touch with you. The sweet spot is going to be some number of links, seven or fewer, that include the top answers to that question. Now on to the next question. How do you choose which pages make the cut? To answer this, let's do a quick exercise. Take out a sheet of paper and draw two overlapping circles, labeling each with the following. Pages visitors are looking for and pages I want visitors to find. Identify the pages that belong in the pages visitors are looking for circle, pages I want visitors to find circle, and the pages that belong in both. You may find several that fit into at least one of the circles and possibly 
even a few that fit into both. Any of these pages could be good navigation items, but especially the ones that check both boxes. Okay, we've chosen the layout and we've selected pages, but we're not quite done. There's one last small but significant task, and that's titling your main navigation links. Choosing good titles for your main navigation is all about providing a good user experience. People have an easier time finding information if it's labeled in a way they'd expect. In many cases, conventional naming works best. If it's an about page, you title it about. If it's a blog, you call it blog. A listing of your products, you title it products. You can get a little creative without sacrificing the user experience. Instead of about, you could say meet Ben, but with your name. Instead of blog, you could say weekly journal. If you sell educational products, instead of products, you could say learning resources. Keeping the user experience in mind, you could also use instructional navigation. Instead of telling a visitor what a link is, it gives the visitor something to do. A great example of this is Podia user Emily Mills. On her website, courses.sketchacademy.com, her main navigation instructs visitors to start here, view all offerings, and join the community. Emily helps people express themselves creatively through sketching, so these navigation items do a fantastic job of meeting the intent of the visitor and giving clear instructions for what they can do based on what they need. However you decide to lay out or title your navigation, make sure you always keep the user experience in mind. If visitors feel like they can easily find what they need, they're more likely to actually explore your website, sign up for your newsletter, or buy your products. Coming up, we'll do a deep dive into Start Here pages like we saw in the example for Emily Mills' website and how you can use them to point visitors to exactly the information they need.